The try catch function in UiPath is a really simple and intuitive function, but yet very useful. So let me show you how to use it and explain you a little bit about it. First off, we will search for a sequence to place our um, try catch in. We'll open that sequence here and we will search for try catch in activities. We'll drag that in our sequence. And um, in this try catch, uh, there are three blocks, the try, the catches, and the finally. The try is the set of activities or a single activity that has a chance of drawing an error to you. So you will drop like an activity that might have an error here, and then you'll make a catch Tell the program, tell UiPath what to do if an error occurs in this set of activities up here. It could be like making a log message or uh, yeah, writing something to um, an Excel sheet or anything. You can uh, put all sorts of activities in here at the catch. And then the final is just like a final activity performing performed after the try and catch block. And basically I never use it, I always put it outside. But uh, you can use it if you want. Um, so let me show you a simple example. Well, uh, let us say that we want to type something in our notepad here. So we will um, choose the uh, try activity that is uh, typing in our notepad here. We could just type hello YouTube here. Um, but we, we think that there might be a chance uh, that this will throw an error because sometimes this might be closed or something. So uh, then we will make a catch and we'll make an exception here. Uh, we can choose from all kinds of exception. We'll just choose the general exception, uh, system exception. You can see there's a lot of exception to browse for, but uh, usually you'll just use the system exception if nothing is specified. And then we'll, we can add an um, activity to that um, exception. Um, usually I will make a log message. So that could be, we'll drag in a log. Here, log level, that could be info. Um, then we could um, write something like the notepad part. And then we could, um, type the UI path exception message. So that will be the exception dot message like this. And first off, uh, we'll run it with the notepad open. So you can see how that works because nothing will really happen. It will just type hello YouTube in the notepad here and it will end like normal, no caches because there was no error in the, the activity up here. However, if we close the notepad like this, then we'll have a catch and let's see what happens when we have a catch. It will um, write in our log in the output, but um, oh hello, we'll just make a timeout of five seconds. Otherwise we can sit and wait in like 30 seconds. So we'll um, uh, make a timeout here, 5,000, that's five seconds. And we will run it. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. And then um, we can go down to output here. Uh, I'm not really sure, yeah, here it is. We can see that, uh, that this was our message notepad part. And then uh, UI path is telling us that it can't find the UI element corresponding to the selector, of course, because, that's the, because the notepad is closed. So um, yeah, that was uh, understandable. We could um, we could also like in the exception part here, we could make a lot of exceptions, but let's say that we wanted to store it into a, um, like an Excel sheet or something, like we want a status sheet, then we could um, assign a variable. We could call that control K, create a new variable. We could call that str. Um, exception message and then we uh, that exception message could be like again it could be like notepad part and then exception message like 
this. And um, then we could use a message box here. And we could display that, that message. We'll run it. Uh, Notepad is not open, so we'll go into the catch block. And we can see here that oh, node part and then the um, UI path um, exception message here. So this was quite easy to understand, I think. Um, I haven't specified anything in the finally, but that makes sense because that will happen whatever happens up here. And um, let's say that usually when UI path, uh, if this was just like a normal thing, let's say that it was placed outside the try catch block here, then it will stop the whole program um, running like like this. Um, let's see. One, two, three. It will stop like this and it won't go any further. However, like let's say that it was some, um, this was a minor error in our entire workflow. Then we wanted, uh, then we don't want your pass to stop and we just wanted to throw in a log message or yeah, a message somewhere else. So that's uh, why and how we use the try cats. That's it for now.